Welcome back to Observing the Sabbath. I am your host, Nathaniel Molnar. I am joined once again by Johnny Gifford. Johnny, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Uh, so you joined us last for while we talked about FX, uh, one of the more interesting instrumentals mm. for uh, that Black Sabbath has really ever done. Uh, and now we're going straight into Supernaut. Uh, which, of course, has always been the opener for the Observing the Sabbath uh, videos. Uh, I've always thought, it, it's funny because I've heard that song so many times, not just because every time that I edit Observing the Sabbath, I hear that song, but just because it's such a damn good song. <laughs> I listen to it a lot. Um, Supernaut is such a timeless song and probably just one of the top, top, top tier Sabbath songs. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Where does this where does this song rank in like your your top Black Sabbath songs? I know it's up there. In my top five. Rough, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know exactly five. where, but definitely. Yeah, oh, it's, it's a hard five. question. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, so I'm not gonna say any more. So let's just dive right into it. So this is Super Not. You ready? Yep. All right, and now. Ooh, the opening hi-hat, just like... It's such a good transition from FX, too. It's like that constant kind of, like, tones. Mm. And then, whoosh, here we go. Yeah, it just takes Here's you. The ride. Now, I, I think it's interesting that the next song on this album is the song about cocaine. Because that song, Snowblind, is like the sort of quieter. Like, it kind of, it slows down a little bit. But this is the song that's, like, all the energy. Mm. So I always kind of interpret it like exactly. this is like the the high paced uh, energetic part of uh, I've never been on cocaine, but I would imagine from everything I know, you have the high paced uh, frenetic part and then you yep. kind of die down from there. And I think they kind of show that with the two songs back to back. Yeah, they really do. It's I, I view this song as like the inspiring, like self-confidence, like boost and like everything is so great from you know, from the drugs, but also I think the message of the song is more just like, oh, be the best person you can be, like, you don't need anyone, you got yourself, you know, like, yeah, kind of in, a, in an inspiring way, and then the next song is just, you're really just in that, like, drugged out haze, even though cocaine is, like, yeah, traditionally viewed as, like, a speed drug, um, just, there's just so much intense drug usage on their part in general throughout that song and this album and their career that... It's just kind of the vibe that that they want to give you, even though it's specifically about cocaine. Yeah, definitely. I agree with all that. Uh, and I think you're talking about this theme of not relying on anyone but yourself. Yeah. That is a very constant theme throughout this whole album. Uh, you see it on Wheels of Confusion. You see it here. You definitely see it in Under the Sun. Uh, and that's part of why uh, Volume 4 is, I think, my favorite Black Sabbath album, is I really love the themes and messages of this, um, this album, in addition to just all the great riffs and all the great songs and everything like that. Uh, you also get that in uh, Cornucopia a little bit as well. The guitars yeah. and the riffs in this song is just top notch. Yeah, the, the riff, that riff is so memorable, and also, I don't... I don't think they're doing it right now, but at the beginning... Oh, now they're doing it. There's a really beautiful harmony to the riff that Tony is playing, like, sort of in the background. You can hear it in the right ear a bit. Mm. It's following the same riff, but it's just, like, just very pleasing to the ears to hear that perfect harmony. And now we have this part of the song, which goes just drums and then all this weird auxiliary percussion and acoustic guitar. I think that's really cool, too. And I, I hear, like, bands do that nowadays as, like, a kind of like a silly, we don't take ourselves seriously joke kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And these are the guys that really started it. They pioneered that kind of like, don't take yourself seriously. I and mean, we heard that with FX too. It's a joke. But the music still sounds kind of very serious. Yeah. And I, I really like like this placement within the song because I feel like where this happens is typically where Tony would get his big solo. 
Um, and yeah. you don't really need it with Supernaut because I feel like the entire song is his solo. You know, yeah, it's, such much. A, it's such a guitar driven and guitar heavy song that the break from it, what differentiates it, would be to have the sort of percussion y drum part that's like so tonally very different from the rest of it, but it fits so much in life. I feel like in so many ways they're they're saying fuck you to the record companies and in, in uh in this song just because like you know throughout the lyrics it's quite literal like like I don't need you I don't need this I don't need to pretend I got all I want like don't try to reach me um, and then just like that part we were talking about specifically too it's like the record company is like all right we need the big solos we need uh, the hard hitting parts like to, to sell some records and they're just like nah we're just gonna throw some wacky stuff in here. Definitely. And then our slow zoom and out. I think or just fade out. one of my Yeah. Night beautiful fade out. Um I one of mm. just the the final uh verses of this song is just some of my absolute favorite. Got no religion, don't need no friends, got all I want, I don't need to pretend, so don't try to reach me because I'll tear up your mind. I've seen the future and I left it behind. It's 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 yeah. it's cool, and I love the little. There's a bit of a fantasy element to the song too, um, that I really like. I also just love like the opening part. Like I want to reach up, I want to touch the sky, I want to touch the sun, but I don't need to fly. I'm gonna climb up over every mountain on the moon and find the dish that ran away with the spoon. Uh, it, it's it's all like it's like very much about just moving forward. It's like a it's like a bam right out the gate and just like I wanna I wanna touch the sky i want to reach out i want to do all these things and then kind of this journey of finding i don't really need other people all i really need is myself uh it, it's it's really well done and, and once again they really do a phenomenal job at matching the lyrical content with the pace and the tone of the music as well mm. this song is so uplifting in so many ways just like it's semi-fast tempo it's non-stop riffs it's like constantly moving bass line and just the like explosive vocals from Ozzy um, and then that's pretty much they, they're they matching what the song's about pretty dang well there I think yeah they yeah this song is so well done like this is like every time I listen to this song I'm just kind of blown away by it because uh, it has so much power it has so much energy and so much force like it, it's it's unlike really I would say maybe the closest equivalent would probably be Paranoid. Because uh, Paranoid kind of has that similar, mm -hmm. like, powerful uh, riff. But I would say Supernaut, like, I, I mean, I love Paranoid, but Supernaut, I think, is even better. Like, it just, like, it it really just goes for it. It's just like a, it's just, it's like a bolt of lightning. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I, I think Super, uh, Super Knots, I think, is my favorite. S uh, actually, no, I'm not going to say Super Knots my favorite on the album. Uh, I have another song that's my favorite on the album. Mm. Uh, Wheels of Confusion, I'd say, is my favorite on the album. But Super Knots a very close second. Mm -hmm. Super Knots just phenomenal. Uh, I think it's fantastic guitars, uh, fantastic riffs, fantastic sound and tone overall, great lyrics. Just great composition and, and and structure as a song. Overall, I just think Super Nuts is brilliant. Yeah, and it's smack dab in the middle of the album, too. Is this the last song of Side A or first song of Side B? Uh, last of Side A, and then yeah. Snowblind is the first of Side B, which I think is a very great uh, placement for those. Yeah, I think that's a really good way to structure the album overall. You're Absolutely. ending strong and you're starting... See, what you want to do with like albums, I think, is... And, and even like sides of albums, because when you're listening to it on vinyl, you're kind of getting separate experiences from either side. You kind of want to start by introducing like a, a viewer or listener to your world and then end like as bit large as you can. Uh, I think that's a really good way to do it. And that's what they're doing here is they're ending side A with just this really explosive thing. They're starting side B. They're like, all right, let's stop. Let's start over for a minute. Well, it's easy back into it, and they start with this really, like, slow, heavy song coming next. Yeah, and definitely, like, I think the uh, the opening of Snowblind, I think, is so strong that that's the perfect way to open up Side B. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it, 
just that structure as you were talking about it it works really well yeah they're they're consistently hitting it out of the park in terms of album flow and that's something i really listen for in an album because i'm very much like an album oriented guy i listen i like to listen mostly to just albums in uh in order instead of just like random songs and i can i like can recognize that black sabbath is we're pioneers of really being able to make an album flow as well as they do definitely and i think also part of it is we've talked about this as we've gone through the albums uh that black sabbath and paranoid were recorded in like one or two days pretty much just doing their live sets and once you got to master of reality that was really them working for weeks in the studio to fine tune and really put together an album uh and i think with volume four they carry over that mindset of uh, Master of Reality where they're kind of tweaking and working on putting together structurally an album. But I think they also kind of take their, the, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of the spontaneity of the first two albums of being able to do it live and work on it live that they bring to volume four. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think like with everything you were saying about uh, creating and structuring an album and that stuff that you look for. I think once you get to volume four, you've seen that they've been working and building on that because um, over the last couple of years that they've really been doing these albums, you can tell that they've matured and grown in terms of how they approach music from when you start out with Black Sabbath to now that we're at this point with volume four. And they're, they've really honed it like so well from their first album to hear like you hear the uh just the progress that they've made in terms of their song structure their album structure and just how each song is produced whether that's you know the actual sonically the way it's produced or just the like the level of instruments and the level of layers that they're adding in each like they keeps they keep honing their skills more and more and this album is the peak of that thus far absolutely and it's crazy to me. So volume four was 1972. Mm-hmm. This is only two years after they put out their first album. In the span yeah. of two years, they've put out four albums. That's so impressive. Yeah. And I think I think Sabbath Bloody Sabbath was 73. So they did five albums in three years. Um, it, it's... Wow. Yeah. So it, it it's and now they skipped to, now there were two years that they skipped so they skipped seventy four, and they skipped seventy six because sabotage was seventy five, and then technical ecstasy was seventy, or maybe tech technical ecstasy might have been seventy six. I'm not, I'm getting it a little jumbled. Um, but there were only two years in the span from nineteen seventy to nineteen seventy eight. They put out eight albums, and two of those years they did not put out an album. So that really shows just how on it they were. And I think it's incredible just from our point of view now, looking back, that we can see so much growth and disparity uh, from Black Sabbath to Volume 4 when these were only done in the span of two years. I think the fact that it shows so much growth shows how much they've grown in the process of making these. Yeah, that really is an incredible amount of growth for just two short years. It really is. Yeah. All right, so that's going to do it uh, for Supernaut. I want to know, leave all of your thoughts on Supernaut. Uh, Do you agree with us that this is just one of the best Black Sabbath songs? Do you think it's one of the more overrated songs in that you think there are other songs that you would hold up more uh, to be one of Black Sabbath's top rather than Supernaut? I want to know, leave all of your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm Nathaniel Molnar, and I would like to thank Johnny Gifford for being here to help me out with talking about Supernaut. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Nathaniel. Always appreciate it. Always love to have you on. Uh, You can make sure to like, make sure to comment, make sure to subscribe for more content. And we'll be putting out our next video very shortly where we'll be talking about Snowblind. So you want to check that out. So until our next video, until we discuss Snowblind, thanks for watching.
so let's just jump right into it and let's Yo. listen to Supernaut. <laughs> Happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> I'm, oh, on a, it's Nathaniel. I'm on a observing hey. Sabbath stream. <laughs> it's Johnny's birthday. Happy birthday, Happy Johnny. Si wow, you're older than I thought, Johnny. <laughs> I know. I look good for my age. Thanks, guys. Happy birthday, buddy. Wow. Thank you, dude. Live on air. You got swatted. <laughs> Happy birthday. You got swatted live on air. Thank you. Hi, observing the Sabbath. It's Johnny's birthday Hello. episode. I will. I will put this in. This little clip in at the very end nice. of the episode. Nice. <laughs> Uh, I'll put this in nice. the freezer, I guess. Sounds good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Hey, Nathaniel. Hey, Nathaniel. Hello. hello, hello. Hello, lovely fans. Oh, yeah, this is the uh, happy birthday. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. What album are you guys doing right now? Uh, volume 4. We're about to listen to Supernaut. Wow. I think oh, this is the best one. Song. Yeah, I no, agree. it's a good one. I agree. This is the best one, live audience. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 